of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We're going to start this meeting at uh, 6.37. And there's always a late one in the crowd, honey. 6.31. Oh, I said 7 tonight. All right. Anyway, thank you all for coming. Um, you know, always saving the best for last isn't always the best policy. So what we'd like to do, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here tonight. We're excited to present. Uh, I know many of you have been here the last four or five years. The city of Shepherdsville actually introduced a park plan. Well... I think, and everything that we saw in the campaign, this was the opportunity to bring the park plan back to life. So what we'd like to do tonight, I'm going to mention a couple things as we go along here, but I want to bring up Rob and Art, if you guys will come up to the podium for a minute. I'll let them get started with it. There'll be some things we'll add to it, but we really want to introduce you to the new Shepherdsville. And what I mean by that is obviously our park plan, the renovation of our downtown area, and including an aquatic center. So we're excited about all that. A uh, little nervous. Wouldn't lie to you about that. But I'm excited as well to know that we're going to bring these kind of services to our community. So with that said, Arthur, Rob, thank you all for coming out, and uh, I'll let you get started. I want to echo Mayor Cabero's sentiment. Thank you guys for being here. This means a lot. This means that all of you guys care about what we care about as staff, and that's moving our city forward and giving us something to be proud of here in the city of Shepherdsville. So something we've been working on for years, we know that we've got an amazing park master plan and we intend to implement that. Other things that we need here in the city include a streetscape in downtown Shepherdsville so that we can be proud of Buckman again. And thirdly, an aquatic center that would have an attractive ability to it so that not only are we gonna have a great place for our locals to be able to have swim meets for our high school students, we're also going to be able to have a family-friendly events, and it's going to be a community center for people to be able to come together. Silver Slippers will be able to be impacted there so that we can have something for our seniors. Like, we're talking about amazing community-changing events that are about to happen here in Shepherdsville, and we all get to be a part of it. So I'm going to let Rob introduce these projects and what we're going to be bringing to the table over these next few years. And so I, just, I can't say how excited I am in words because what we're about to do is going to change who we are as Shepherdsville. Rob. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name's Rob Campbell. I'm with QK4. I uh, would ask Dave and Ashley if they could come up. And just what, stick your hand up there. I'll introduce them in a second. Two other QK4 teammates of mine. I'm excited to be here tonight. <clears throat> uh, personally, I've always enjoyed being here. I've been working off and on with the city for, for over 25 years personally. So uh, uh, with, with, with that, let's not wait any longer here. So just to restate again what Arthur said, it's, it's the city is long, long needed to implement this city uh, park plan. Uh, multiple efforts over the years, but in 2019, a, a master plan was put together, a very nice master plan, and Mayor Cabero's initiative right off the bat is to take action and get that started today. Um, QK4 is, is a engineering firm with uh, park expertise, uh, streetscape expertise, and uh, site development expertise. We've been, we've been brought on to, to help with each of these initiatives that, that Arthur's talked about. So, First, we'll, we'll jump into the uh, aquatic center, talk about the streetscape improvements and, and where we're gonna take that and, the, and, and then the park and we'll open that up then for the mayor to take it from there. So again, our team, uh, Rob Campbell, I'm a civil engineer. I've been, been with QK4 for almost 30 years now. We, we do, uh, I run the civil site group for QK4. We do, uh, various types of civil engineering work. Uh, David Reed is our COO. He's formerly was in my position, he's my boss, so if I don't do anything right tonight, you, you, can, you can talk to him directly. <laughs> but uh, Dave, Dave has special expertise. If any of you guys have gotten to enjoy the Parklands, 
that has his fingerprints on it. He ran that, that job for us, um, the design, and, uh, and then we oversaw the construction as well. Ashley Bartley is a landscape architect also for TK4, uh, one, one of my team members, and she'll play a key role in developing these plans. So some of the folks here, th I'll be brief with this, some of the folks here have known, known me and TK4 for a long time uh, and worked with us on a number of projects. Just for, their, for everybody's benefit, to give you guys a little feel for our range, uh, currently this, uh, if you've heard about the paper mill in Henderson, they're building a $500 million project. We did all the site development on that. So planning the site and all the utilities and roadways uh, were done by our group. Uh, the Log Still Distillery, if anybody's familiar with New Haven or have got to enjoy any concerts down there at the amphitheater, uh, there on site, we laid out that master plan with Wally Dant and, and uh, helped them develop this site. All the utilities, roadways, uh, the lake, etc. Churchill Downs, if you go there, Churchill Downs, uh, we're Churchill Downs preferred civil engineer. So all the improvements you've, if you've been there, the park, the uh, parking lot, uh, the new paddock, uh, that, that is all projects that we have done the civil engineering on. Keeneland's the same way, we're doing work with them. They've got a new paddock improvement there. We did that work as well. And then numerous streetscapes, I could, Dave probably could go on and on about all the different streetscapes we've done, but all the area on Brook Street around U of L, and those, all those improvements were, the engineering was done by, our, by QK4, uh, Danville, Mount Washington, uh, multiple sites in Jefferson County, and then of course the Parklands. So, so we have the range and the ability to, to take on this work and help you all make the park and the streetscape and the aquatic center something special. And I just wanted to throw that out there so you didn't have any doubt about our capabilities. So D Disney said the way to get started is to quit talking and to begin doing. So that's what today represents from the time that, that Jose came to, to us to talk to us about this. It's been obvious that he's a man of action. Um, so the aquatic center, right now, where it's gonna go, we don't know. What it's gonna look like, we don't know. So this, this, this first step has to be taken to, to identify those parameters. What, where will it go? Will it be an indoor facility only? Will it be indoor and outdoor? Will there be sort of play amenities to it? Will it be geared towards swim meets? Will it do both? The cool thing is you're talking about this and deciding those things, not whether or not we're gonna do it. This is, and that's where we're at today. So what QK4 is gonna do, is we're gonna help support the city staff on selecting a site. We're gonna help support the city staff on identifying those constraints. And once a site is selected, will, will that site have any, any, uh, any problems that we need to address right off the bat? Will the amenities that we want for the, for the aquatic center work on that site? That, that, is, that is our job to work with them on that at this point. Streetscape. So Streetscape uh, Buckman, it, it, if you, when you think about Buckman Street from, from the river to 44, if there's, a, if there's an area of town that could be made more iconic, more you know, uh, visually pleasing, uh, think of that during Christmas time, for instance, or any other time, uh, it, you want it to be something that you're proud of. We're gonna help you get it there. Um, we've, we've completed projects of, in, in multiple cities, and I'm gonna show you some examples of, of, of uh, you know, potential improvements that we could make. So again, just mentioned the area there shown in green the, of interest. So right now when you think about Buckman, there's, 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 some, there's some challenges. Right now it, it floods uh, at times. There's, there's an area that's low there at Second Street where Jovi Hall meets, meets Buckman. The street lights are, you know, you've got the overhead wires, you've got the street lights are, are quite low, and then you've got varying levels on the sidewalks and, and maybe not the best use of the roadway. Width. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do traffic and parking analysis. We're gonna look at those issues with the utilities, with, with works, and identify 
opportunities for improvement. So we'll be looking at, in this picture you see here, just as an example, you know, do we want pavers? Do we want a mix of pavers and, and, and uh, concrete? Do we want, uh, you know, what kind of street lights do we want? Those kinds of decisions and, and what works best with the cross section that you have there and the uses, the daily uses. So some more pictures here, you know, just uh, of, of other communities we've worked in and you see some, some uh, examples of what, what it can look like. Um, and, and I think obviously the, the uh, opportunity exists for us to make these improvements. Simple as this is in J-Town, simple as selecting, um, uh, you know, the benches and the, and, the tr and the trash cans. It sounds simple, right? It is simple, but if you're not consistent with it, it, it doesn't, you don't get, achieve that look. So at the end of, at the, of this effort, we're gonna work with you all to identify with the, with the existing sort of palette that you have of Buckman Street, what what choices do we want to make? What look do we want to have um, to make to make uh, Shepherdsville more attractive? Uh, additionally, you know, ideas like a street insignia are are sort of in vogue these days, and we've we've done those. Uh, gateway gateway signage. You may not want this type of overhead sign, but. But as we work with the city to identify opportunities, these are these are projects we've worked on, and we, we know how to make how to make that happen. So at the end at the end of our streetscape effort, we're going to have your schematic design alternatives presented to 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 the city for their determination of which alternative they're going to select and what that look is going to look like. So it's important, obviously, to get community input now and in this at front end of this project. So. <clears throat> we'll, we're excited to, to move that forward. So Buckman and Second Street is, is the perfect segue to, to move into a discussion of the park. Right, right at, at that location, you've got what will be likely the, the, the primary entrance to the park. So this, this uh, the 2019 master plan that was created identified over there on the on the far uh, side of the screen there a town center right at second street it'll be one of the first things we do is work work with the mayor work with city staff to identify what improvements that can be made at that location how can we integrate parking with the street streetscape improvements on buckman how can we uh, how can we further improve connectivity from the rest of the city to 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 Buckman and to the city park. Um, additionally, um, we'll be uh, we'll be looking at uh, at uh, additional is there additional properties or areas we could add parking to to the city park. Um, the city park is 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 pretty dynamic in its in itself uh, right now. You know, you in terms of possible things you could do here. You've got ball fields. You've got a walking path. Uh, it's you've got the saddle club and the and the potential incorporation of that into the park. You have uh, mm -hmm. some houses that you may have noticed that have been acquired out on 44. So you've got an entrance improvements that can be made there as well. So the the palette is there and the master plan is there. So now what we need to do is is take a look at the implement, <coughs> implementation of each of those items and make sure they work. You know, will the great are the grades working out? Or are we working with the floodplain um, uh, and, and getting through those details? Another thing that we bring to the table is, is, the, is our connection to the parklands. With our uh, knowledge of what it took to make that park happen, to, to implement those looks and those types of amenities here is where we're going. Um, on the right side of this screen, you see the, um, just a hopped on line, Trailers R Us, our Trails R Us has a, had a, uh, a canoe um, uh, launching points from all the way from Oldham County down, down to Shepherdsville. So there's, there's a natural connectivity from the parklands to Shepherdsville. And, and that connectivity is something that, that we're looking to take, take and apply here. So we're, we're gonna be able to you know, use our knowledge base from the parklands and, and, uh, and apply it uh, at, at this park. Uh, so uh, trail improvements, 
but while this one's fully wooded, and I and, and I realize the city park is not is not fully wooded in the exact same way, these same concepts of paths that are meandering and, and work with the uh, topography that you have um, is is where we're heading. There are opportunities for uh, pedestrian bridges um, out there in the walking path. We handled all those as well. <coughs> Planned landscaping, uh, you know, can can't be overstated. To be honest with you, the 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 layout of the of the plantings um, at the park, how how they're laid out, make a huge difference in the ultimate look of, of the park. And, and I'll show a couple more pictures here to give you a feel for that. Uh, we have wetlands there um, uh, that was constructed. Uh, I forget how many years ago as a mitigation, but it's actually you know a a cool feature because you can use it for educational purposes with kids and and it actually does make an, a difference environmentally we're able to discharge stormwater into the wetlands and it naturally cleans the water so so accentuating that somehow is that's out there is an opportunity the the look of of the buildings and improvements on site is is something that we're going to work with you guys to to consider and be consistent with so so It'd be something that sort of dresses up what you have, and 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 moving forward, if you have that motif, that look designated as as things continue to develop over time, you end up with the consistent look, something that's very attractive. You can be very proud of. Here's another picture of an of a multi a multi-purpose uh, event space. Um, you know that's that's a clear low-hanging fruit for for you all is is to ident identify a place where you're going to build some infrastructure that you can utilize for city events and, and potentially even rent out as well. Just another example of a pavilion. It's a, it's a bathroom, right? But it's also, it's a pavilion. So, so this kind of thinking is, these are, these are all um, uh, examples of, of what we can bring to the table as, as opportunities and ideals. <coughs> Ultimately, when you look at the egg lawn, and you can see it from 64, you guys probably have all seen this, but when, when you look at that, it, lo it looks like a piece of art, and why not, right? If we're going to do this, let's do it right. Let's, let's take the park and from the way it is today, and, and let's advance it into something that, that not only includes the types of amenities we're talking about, but also has a look that you guys are proud of that you can see in an aerial photo and say, that's my park. Uh, Lastly, in terms of examples, you've got an exi existing amphitheater that it's, it's not necessarily set super useful right now. It's in, it's in the floodway, it's, and without getting any details, it makes, makes it challenging to improve it greatly. So we're going to look at opportunities uh, to, to make the, the amphitheater better and, and improve it. You know, maybe that involves moving it, and maybe it doesn't. But... We've, we just did, a, uh, the one at Logsdale is a, a pretty good example of how something can grow uh, from what it is into something greater than, than originally imagined. So when that one started, it was just gonna be a sitting area for small events and it's turned into an, a, a, a place where um, a Lady Annabelle is gonna be there this fall. It's, it's, it's turned into quite, quite the big deal. So um, why not here, right? Why not here in Shepherdsville? So uh, as a result of this effort, we're gonna to put together the schematic design for this. We're gonna get down into the details on each of these items as we decide working with the city what we're going to implement, what we're gonna build inside of that master plan. And as a result of that, we'll have, we'll have the cost and the plan forward completely laid out. So data collection, uh, presenting the opportunities to the city, working with the city to identify quick hitting items that we can get done quickly on the, on the front end, not, not years out, but, but, but this year, but that's where we're going. Uh, so this, this draft the schematic plan that we're putting together for the park, for the streetscape, and then helping with the aquatic center site selection will enable us to, to get you guys to construction. So uh, I kind of ripped through that. Uh, Mayor, so you may you may want to add to it. But oh, I, I do. Yeah, I, I have a feeling oh, you I do. do. I have to let the engineer talk first. Yeah, I know you did, <laughs> but uh, the other thing too, I wanted to open up. If, if uh, it's up to the mayor, of course, but uh, 
Dave and Ashley uh, are more expert on the park and streetscape than me personally, so if there's any specific questions you want to get into with them, um, we're pretty excited about, about this opportunity. Thank you for, for putting us on the team, and uh, we will knock this out of the park for you. Did you know how quiet I was? Yeah. I spent all that time. I was pretty that good. That was amazing. It. I wanted to I'm say told. so much. Anyway, first of all, thank you, Rob. We're looking forward to working with you. Yes, so sir. I appreciate your work. We're just getting started, folks. Boy, let me, uh, where do I start? Pride. I wrote it down right here. Pride. Proud of our city. Things that we're going to do. I tell you, that really means a lot to me for people to get excited about the vision first. We can tell you that financially, we're working with the council and we're getting started, educating them on the whole process and the kind of money this is needed. This is a big investment. I would be lying to you if I told you I wasn't a little nervous. But as nervous as I am, I'm 100 times more excited about what's going to happen to Shepherdsville. Our folks deserve this, okay? The Aquatic Center, let me start with that. The only thing I, I want you all to under, really truly understand, that's coming. But how we design it, looking at property that we get available to us, is going to happen. There's so many ways to really make that an integral part. If we just talk about the swimming pool part of it, we make it the size it's going to be, it's for our swim teams. I want our sports <laughs> to be here in this community. I want you to travel to Shepherdsville to go to a cross-country uh, cross meet in our park. I want a bowling alley here. That's going to be private invested. We're going to be working on it. So we have a home court bowling for all three high schools. These are the kind of things that we want for our folks, not only in Shepherdsville, but for Bullock County. Because remember, when Shepherdsville does well, you'll see, hear me say this a lot, Bullock County does well, Kentucky does well. I think Bullock County has the opportunity over the next five or ten years, with the right vision and implementation of this program, we're going to see some real good things. So that aquatic park is coming. More will come on that. We will try to update you at least once a month on where the progress is. Right now we're in that really dull, boring, sorry Rob, doing paperwork stuff and laying it all out. But it's real important. It's still just not very exciting yet. The streetscape, the one thing he just glossed over, okay, 44. I, I don't know how many times I drove past 44 and missed that entrance. You're not going to miss this entrance. We don't own the two houses next to it, but we own the next three. If you're facing it, looking at Frankie Simon Road, those two houses we don't own, the next three we do. That is your entrance to the park. It's going to be real nice white picket fences, a nice archway. It's going to be this is how you come in to the new park. Okay? That's real important to us. We're going to change the entrance again, as Rob mentioned on, on uh, Buckman. The biggest thing about Buckman is, it's like anywhere else. Why do you want to come downtown? Well, we want to bring a town center to you. We want to do more things to bring you there. We want to look at businesses that want to be a part of this so you can walk around our town. We've got ARPA money that we're going to include on the renovation and beautification of downtown. We're bringing electric. I got Ms. Paula, Mr. Mike, and Ms. Vicki Downing all working together to put together estimates on our lamppost. Okay? We've got obviously some donations on really nice flower arrangements, big pots, 500, big old 500 pound pots to have down there. We're going to put things in Greenscape. We talked about that. There's a, there's a process. The biggest thing most people don't think about is lighting. Mr. Mike brought that up. He goes, you know, you've got to think about the lighting you got down there and the lighting you want to put in there. Right? So little things have to go into making sure that aesthetically it's right downtown. But that's going to make it really nice. And we're going to light up the bridge. We're going to fix the bridge, the broken rails. Everybody see those broken rails on that bridge? Yeah. Okay. We've got some good work. State, the State Department was actually really excited that we're actually doing things in Shepherdsville, Wendy's. <coughs> the park. The park. If anybody can catch that, Wendy's, we clear that some of that. I right. want to make sure you see that we're working on those type of things to make our city. We can do low-hanging fruit, but in the process of looking and investing the kind of money we want to invest, it takes time. We know that we're financially ready to do this. We can do it within the budget we have. Okay. That's the most exciting part about this. We're not asking for anything else. We can do it. We can manage it. Department heads are all committed to it, aren't you? All right. Here, nodding heads. But we're in a situation we're going to manage it within our budget we have. Okay, because of that, we want to make sure that you look at that park. We're going to have three soccer fields. So we're going to have soccer tournaments here. There's an 18-hole Frisbee golf in there. The people that design that guarantee you two tournaments. And if you do a really good job, they give you five or six. There are 300 people that show up for these Frisbee golf tournaments. That's a lot of people coming to Shepherdsville. You know, we, our people are going somewhere else to do things. We bring those tax dollars back. We keep changing the infrastructure. We keep investing that money more ways to walk around. And the one thing that he didn't mention 
that I'm really excited about. I call it the little duckling path. Shepherdsville Elementary is right across the street from 44 in that entrance. We're going to build a sidewalk from that school all the way to 44. We're going to put up, put all the buttons on, you know, crosswalk, everything like that, so the kids from Shepherdsville and the middle school can walk right down that road, go across that street, and go into that park. I think that might be one of the most exciting things about the whole thing. I think that's really cool. So when you guys, this is going to be an updated thing that we're going to try to do every meeting. And if you know me, I'm going to be the first one to tell you about it. I don't know if I haven't talked to everybody about what we're trying to do here, because I'm excited about that. But we need you to know what we're doing. And step by step, we'll let you know. The park's got a lot of things that are going to be great. The amphitheater, you're right. We've talked about a portable pavilion down there, because the band would be about 12 feet from the river. Don't push them in if you don't like them. But, but it's a way to do things that we have things here. I don't want you to leave. It's not a zero-sum game for you. If we have these kind of services for you here, it's going to show the pride that everybody has in the city. So I'm excited for the first phase, first step, is just introducing it to you. We'll continue to give you things. We're working finances. We're working with this council. Trust me, that they got a lot of questions when you talk about $30 million. You're a pin drop. It's a lot of money. It's investment we're going to make. We're going to manage it correctly and show the taxpayers that their money is going to be used to take care of things for this city. Well deserved over 15, 20 years. Excuse me. It's okay. I'd like to make sure that everybody truly understands this is a commitment I made on the campaign, and it may be novel to everybody. But I plan on, with these fine folks up here, we had a great two and a half days in Lexington. We were one of the about three or four cities that had their whole team in Lexington go into K Kentucky League of Cities. We learned more about how to manage our city, our policies, and everything we did together. And I had a great time with these folks. We learned a little bit about each other, but we learned a lot more about how to run a city. And I learned a few things. And I think it's important for everybody to understand is we're serious about this. Nobody's taking this lightly. But I can tell you, I'm, extre I'm extremely excited to be working with QK4. They've done a lot of nice work out there. The streetscape's going to be awesome. we got a lot with the park. I'm not even going to get into the baseball thing. I see my baseball guys back there. <laughs> but we've got an opportunity to even bring a, a real nice <clears throat> baseball complex to the city. But it's important for us to take this big step in educating you what we want to do first and then showing you how we're going to pay for it and then putting a shovel in the ground. That's how all this works. And it'll take a little bit of time. But trust me, I would hope sometime by this fall we've got shovels in the ground in some places. And that's, what, that's our goal. If everybody knows me, I wanted it yesterday. So with all that said, I do appreciate what we're getting started on. And you guys, listen, our door's always open. If you want to hear more about it, you can come see us. You can call me. I'd be more than glad to try to explain it. I've talked to many people already about what we're trying to do. And we have an opportunity to really change Shepherdsville, and it starts tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. And what we're going to keep doing, moving this ball along. So with that said, you know, I always seem to forget one thing. Can we have a roll call? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Mr. Whitaker? Here. Ms. Mendez? Here. Ms. Portman? Here. Mr. Hibbert? Here. Ms. Mangus? Here. Bonnie is out sick. Yeah, I want you all to know that uh, Bonnie Enlow is out right now. She's actually tested for COVID, so keep her in your prayers. Uh, she sounded a little rough last night. So I think she's doing okay, but let's you know, keep her in your thoughts because you know you never know. I just want to make sure she gets healthy. And we got Deb Hoffman here. She's back from a, a really nasty breaking of the back. All right, well, I'm glad you're here with us. Glad to have you here. So. With that said, uh, our minutes for the last meeting, I'm sure it was we had a very hectic day with things we're going to have for next meeting. I'll get those approved then, okay? So I'm not going to put anything else on Brenda or I'll be really in trouble. <laughs> All right. No old business for us. But we have new business. And what we have, we're uh, meeting our obligations. By state statute, we have to have code enforcement and ethics board. So I am going to have... Um, uh, Rob Adams is first of our code enforcement board members, and I need a motion and a second uh, for nominating Rob Adams to the code enforcement. Have a first? I'll make a motion. All right. I'll second, I'll Mr. Adams. So I got we'll do Brad and Jennifer. All right. Roll call vote, please. Okay. Mr. Hibbert? Yes. Mr. Whitaker? Yes. Ms. Mangus? Yes. All right, five motion carries. Rob, you don't know what you got into. 
All right, we have the next one here, on appointment of Mike Brady to the Code Enforcement Board as well. I need a first <clears throat> motion to... I'll make a motion. All right, Faith, and a second? I second. Ms. Paula. All right, Ms. Rokoff, Mr. Rokoff, Ms. Brady. Mr. Rediford? Yes. Ms. Portman? Yes. Ms. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Hibbert? Yes. Ms. Mendez? Yes. All right, five oh carries. Uh, one absent. Mike Brady, congratulations. I'll talk to you at church. We'll pray together. You're in trouble, Mike. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations to both of you guys. All right. For our ethics committee, um, we have an, uh, we need a motion for an appointment for Shannon Lehman to the ethics committee board. I'll make a motion. Faith is a first. Second. Second for Jennifer. Roll call, please. Ms. Portman? Yes. Ms. Mangus? Yes. Mr. Whitaker? Yes. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. All right. I know this is the non-exciting part of our job, but bear with us. Um, appointment of Candace Burton to the Ethics Committee Board. Motion, please. I make a motion. Make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you sign the hearing? All right. Second. I'll second. Brad, second. Who made the motion? Uh, Paula. Paula did. Okay. All right. Ms. Bender. Yes. Mr. Whitaker. Yes. Ms. Mangus. Yes. All right. So, Candace and Shannon, you might want to be afraid of the mic. All right. Appointment to Pam's not here. Uh, we come, she comes highly recommended from a couple people on the council, and uh, so I need a motion. I'll make a motion. All right. And a second, please. I'll second. I got Brad as a second. Ms. Brenda. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Ms. Portman? Yes. Mr. Whitaker? Yes. Ms. Mangus? Yes. All right. Five vote carries. All right. And uh, last, not but last least, on our list of appointees, Mr. Joe Fleming as our new ABC officer. I've talked to Joe about this, and obviously he wanted to be involved in our community, and we had an opportunity for this position. We've talked a number of times, and I think he's probably been online about 20 times learning about everything you need to do, Joe. Mm -hmm. All right. We, don't, we take everything lightly in our city, and obviously we have some new opportunities <clears throat> to grow our city, obviously. Uh, and we're looking what businesses we want to attract here as well. So it's not always about just the guidelines and, and licenses. It's about what can you do to impact that as far as being involved in our community. So with that said, I need a motion. I make a motion. All right, Ms. Paula, second. Second. All right, Ms. Jennifer Mendez. Ms. Brenda, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Whitaker. Yes. Yes. Ms. Mendez. Yes. Ms. Portman. Yes. Mr. Hibbert. Yes. All right. You're going to be one busy man. Yes. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right. So what, we have some readings that we have here, and I want to just go through this really quickly with this, uh, for the folks in the audience. The first one is obviously that we're having a reading about it. It's just restructuring, making sure our city attorney position is in compliance with recommendations from the KLC, meaning what her position is, because in our ordinance, it had both positions, an employee and a contractor. Maybe boring, but I want to make sure it's important that not only this, but our readings on our, we're going to get into pay scales and job uh, descriptions, is important that we get those things right as we move forward with the city. This is our project, the park, the, green, the streetscape, okay, and the aquatic center. But we have to do our due diligence to make sure we're dotting I's and crosses, crossing our T's as a city. So with that said, I need a reading, the first reading. I'll let Ms. Uh, Catherine Dozier read. Uh, we'll start with the first reading here, please. Thank you, Mr. Dan. There you go. Summary of Ordinance 023-001, an ordinance repealing Ordinance 019 dash 299 of the city of Shepherdsville related to personnel and pay rate classification plan for city employees and non-elected city officers for the city of Shepherdsville, Bullock County, Kentucky. Summary, this ordinance repeals in its entirety ordinance 019 dash 299 passed on September 19th, 2019 relating to the personnel and pay rate classification plan for city employees and non-elected city officers. 
with that said, is what we're doing is we're reestablishing our job uh, job descriptions and pay scales to get this movie. The city has been working on this for a very long time, and I don't want to give you how many years. Truly unacceptable that we're working in that fashion. Things need to get done in a little timely manner. The mm -hmm. taxpayers would expect that. Spending the kind of time that we have over the years is not the way that we should run our business. If we can't run this part, how can we take care of that big project? So I want to make sure that you guys see us in having the unification of this group up here, trying to make sure that we do the right thing every day that we're here in this office. So I think for you guys, I just want to make sure that you understand this. This is important. It may not seem very exciting, but I think you'll find that when we get things like this in place, we're going to have all the opportunity to take care of what we really want for our vision for Shepherdsville. All right, with that said, Ms. Catherine, would you do the first reading of the summary? And on the next reading here, please, on the 22, 23, 02. Ordinance 023 002, an ordinance repealing Ordinance 022. 037 of the City of Shepherdsville related to personnel and pay rate classification plan for city employees and non elected city officers for the City of Shepherdsville, Bullock County, Kentucky. Summary This ordinance repeals in its entirety Ordinance 022 037 passed on March, March 14, 2022, relating to the personnel and pay rate classification plan for city employees and non elected city officers. All right, thank you on that one. All right, we have actually one more reading of the appeal here. Uh, this is going to be uh, on the 023003. Ordinance 023-003, an ordinance repealing Ordinance 022-047 of the City of Shepherdsville related to personnel and pay rate classification plan for city employees and non-elected city officers for the City of Shepherdsville, Bullock County, Kentucky. Summary, this ordinance repeals in its entirety Ordinance 022-047 passed on March 28, 2022 relating to the personnel and pay rate classification plan for city employees and non-elected city officers. Thank you. Very good. Again, more exciting news. All right, Ms. Catherine, would you read again the next summary we have? This is for 023004, please. Ordinance 023-004, an ordinance amending Ordinance 019-283 of the City of Shepherdsville related to personnel and pay rate classification plan for city employees and non-elected city officers for the City of Shepherdsville, Bullock County, Kentucky. Summary. This ordinance amends Ordinance 019-283 as follows. Section 1 sets forth that Section 2 is amended as follows to reflect the job title of assistant finance director instead of treasurer, finance director instead of city controller, human resources director instead of human resources manager, office clerk one instead of office clerk, and the change in the minimum <coughs> and maximum pay for these positions. Two, to reflect the beginning pay rate increase for the administrative positions of city clerk, deputy city clerk, assistant finance director, finance director and code enforcement officer, and to reflect the change from full-time to part-time of the administrative position of community planning and development and the change in the minimum and maximum pay, to reflect the minimum pay rate of $3,000 a year for the administrative position of alcoholic beverage administrator, and to reflect the addition of the administrative positions of accounting clerk one, accounting clerk two, Parks and Recreation Administrator and Economic Development Administrator and the beginning and maximum pay rates for these positions. Section 2 sets forth that Section 3 is amended as follows. To reflect the elimination of the public works positions of maintenance worker and seasonal maintenance worker and to reflect the addition of the public works positions of public works maintenance levels 1, 2, and 3 and public, maintenance, public works maintenance <coughs> probationary slash seasonal and the beginning and maximum pay for these positions. <coughs> section 3 sets forth that Section 5 is amended as follows. To reflect the job title of operations manager instead of superintendent, city engineer instead of engineer, and assistant engineer <coughs> instead of engineering technician. To reflect the changes in beginning and maximum pay for the wastewater treatment plant positions of operations manager city engineer and assistant engineer 
and to reflect the addition of the wastewater treatment plant positions of project engineer, project engineer part-time, engineering intern, wastewater foreman, assistant wastewater foreman, wastewater clerk, wastewater technician levels one, two, and three, and wastewater technician level one part-time, and the beginning and maximum pay for these positions. Section four sets forth that section seven is amended to reflect the incorporation of resolution 22-13 regarding premium pay of $13 an hour added for all el eligible employees. Section five sets forth that section nine is amended as follows, to reflect changes to the job objective, job functions, qualifications, skills, and education requirements of the administrative position of city clerk, and to reflect the addition of the administrative position of parks and recreation administrator and the job objective, job function, reporting responsibility, and educational requirements of the position. Section six sets forth that section 10 is amended to reflect the changes to the job functions, skills, and education requirements of the administrative position of deputy city clerk. Section seven sets forth that section 11 is amended as follows. To reflect the changes to the job objective, job functions, education requirements, and qualifications of the administrative position of assistant finance director, and to reflect the addition of the administrative positions of accounting clerk one and accounting clerk two, and the job objective, job functions, education requirements, and reporting responsibility of these positions. Section 8 sets forth that Section 12 is amended to reflect the changes to the job functions, skills, and education requirements of the administrative position of finance director. Section 9 sets forth that Section 14 is amended to reflect the changes to the job functions, skills, and education requirement of the administrative position of code enforcement officer. Section 10 sets forth that Section 15 is amended as follows to reflect the changes to the job functions of the administrative position of community planning and development coordinator and to reflect the addition of the administrative position of economic De development administrator and the job objective, job functions, skills, education requirements, and other requirements of the position. Section 11 sets forth that section 17 is amended to reflect the changes to the job functions and education requirements of the administrative position of human resources director. Section 12 sets forth that section 19 is amended as follows, to reflect the addition of public works positions of public works director and public works administrator assistant and the job objective, job functions, educational requirements, and other requirements of these positions, and to reflect the changes of the job objective, job functions, educational requirements, and other requirements of the public works position of public works foreman. Section 13 sets forth that section 20 is amended as follows, to reflect the elimination of the public works position of maintenance worker and to reflect the addition of public works positions of public works maintenance levels one, two, and three, and the job objective, job functions, education requirements, physical requirements, and reporting responsibility of these positions. Section 14 sets forth that section one is amended as follows, to reflect the elimination of the public works position of seasonal maintenance worker and to reflect the addition of the public works position of public works maintenance, probationary dash seasonal, and a job objection, job objective, job function, education requirements, physical requirements, and reporting responsibility of this position. Section 15 sets forth that section 22 is amended to reflect the changes to the job objective, job functions, education requirements, and work environment of the wastewater treatment plant position of operations manager. Section 16 sets forth that section 23 is amended to reflect the changes to the job objective, job functions, skills, work environment, and safety equipment of the wastewater treatment plant position of city engineer. Section 17 sets forth that section 24 is amended to reflect the changes to the job functions, education requirements, work environment, and safety equipment of the wastewater treatment plant position of assistant engineer. Section 18 sets forth that section 25 is amended as follows. To reflect the elimination of the wastewater treatment plant position of collections supervisor slash MS4 and to reflect the additions of wastewater treatment plant positions of project engineer, project engineer part-time, and engineering intern 
and their job objective, job functions, educational requirements, work environment, safety equipment, and reporting responsibility of these positions. Section 19 sets forth its section 26, it's amended as follows. To reflect the elimination of the wastewater treatment plant position of sewer maintenance worker and to reflect the addition of the wastewater treatment plant positions of wastewater foreman, assistant wastewater foreman, and wastewater clerk in the job objective, job functions, education requirements, work environment, safety equipment, and reporting responsibility of these positions. Section 20 sets forth that section 27 is amended as follows. To reflect the elimination of the wastewater treatment position of seasonal maintenance worker and to reflect the addition of the wastewater treatment plant positions of wastewater technician levels one, two, and three and wastewater technician level one part-time and the job objective, job functions, education requirements, skills, physical requirements, and reporting responsibility of these positions. First of all, I know that was really boring, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm very grateful for Catherine. I think she still likes me barely after the kind of work we've actually put her through. What we've basically done, this is the first reading of the job descriptions and pay scales to get our folks moving in the right direction. That's the responsibility of this council. We've already talked to some of them already. We've got two more weeks before we have a second reading and a vote to get this to move forward as far as the pay scales and job descriptions. So first of all, I know the council has raised, gave me some uh, good questions. We've worked on stuff already and as a request on that from Bonnie and Faith about the economic development position and also the community planner. So we made some adjustments there on some rates and the descriptions of those. So thank you for your comments. And I know Brad and I talked a little bit about some things today. So we are getting feedback from them. We'll have the next reading on the February 13th. I was trying to give her a break. She's now got to read the next ordinance, <laughs> which is 023005. It's not that long. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Ordinance 023-005, an ordinance amending section 32.16 of the City of Shepherdsville Code of Ordinances related to city attorney legal counsel. Summary, this ordinance sets forth that section 32.16 of the City of Shepherdsville Code of Ordinances is amended to reflect that the city attorney is an independent contractor and not an employee or officer of the city. It wasn't too bad. Shorter. The unfortunate part, she gets to read again. <laughs> One more for you. Resolution 2023-01, City of Shepherdsville, whereas the General Assembly of the Commonwealth of Kentucky has enacted sections 18A.230 through 18A.275 of the Kentucky Revised Statutes, authorizing the creation of the Kentucky Public Employees Deferred Compensation Authority, Board of Trustees and the establishment of the Kentucky Public Employees Deferred Compensation Authority, and whereas the Commonwealth by KDC sponsors the Kentucky Employees 457 Deferred Compensation Plan and the Kentucky Public Employees 401k Deferred Compensation Plan, which includes KDC's deemed IRA program, the plans, for adoption by local governmental political subdivisions and units, and whereas the city of Shepherdsville wishes to adopt and enter that certain joinder agreement attached here to dated January 23rd, 2023. Now, therefore, be it ordained, resolved that the city council of the city of Shepherdsville, Commonwealth of Kentucky, hereby enters and adopts the joinder agreement with KDC for participation in the 457 plan and the 401k plan for the benefits of its eligible employees and further resolved that Mayor Jose Cabrero be and hereby is authorized and directed by the City Council to execute the joinder agreement with KD KDC which authorizes KDC to administer the plans on behalf of the City of Shepherdsville and to do all further acts and things and to execute all further documents in writing which the authorized signatory determines to be necessary or desirable in order to affect this resolution. The good news is, that's the last thing you have to read. <laughs> All right, we need a motion. I'll make a motion. All right, Faith is the first to approve this. Second? Yes. Second. Got Brad on a second. All right, roll call, Ms. Brenda. All right, Ms. Portman. Yes. Mr. Hooper. Yes. Ms. Nicholas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I said. <laughs> All right. We've got six on that. Just kidding. All right. 
five zero carry. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, well, first of all, I appreciate you going through that, but it's very important to us that we establish these guidelines. These are statutes that we have to abide by. Um, yeah. uh, but I want to make sure a couple things. We were trying to go through all this today, and obviously, not knowing exactly how much time we were going to spend on our big project, we we want to make sure. Um, didn't have speakers today, but I know that uh, in being a citizen of Shepherdsville, I know we have drainage problems. I know we have road problems. I know we have a little bit of everything. We obviously got a situation. The, the, the resident has left us. She lives next door to that sandbag house. And if any of you haven't seen it, and all I'm going to say to this group and to everybody else, we're serious about trying to listen and resolve these issues. Uh, we'll have guest speakers next week, and we'll go through that. I think the important thing is there, that's money involved, and we are trying to do things a little at a time. If you've driven on Old Beach Grove Road in the last few days, you will have known that we repaired that road as quickly as possible. We uh, want to thank Scott, Arthur, and Tom. Thank you all for ex expediting that kind, and also the, the no left-hand turn is going to be a challenge. That's breaking a habit, but we're going to get there, all right? And then I know, obviously, with some of the residents that are here, we are going to look at each of these situations on the drainage. We know it's a challenge, uh, but there's a cost involved in that. I know the problems that we see on Old o Beach Grove Road and Blue Lick Road, and I know we've got some other areas that are struggling with some of the drainage problems. But please know that we're working on it. We're taking it seriously. We are trying to answer the calls as they come in. We were challenged with rain last week. That was more than we ever, well, two weeks ago uh, on, on that rain. But I think it's important for you all to know that we, are, we do care and we do want to make sure that we're kind of prioritize what we can get done first. Again, some of this can be done with some monies that we have available to us. Some will have to wait for some funding. So but I wanted to make that point because I know we didn't have speakers, and I know that's been a concern, some of the drainage issues we see. I know we're working right now <coughs> on West Blue Lake with the issues on the, on the sidewalk there. That was horrendous during all that time. So we are working on that. We are trying to take care of other things. We uh, small gesture, if you haven't driven by Wendy's, you'll see that we've actually cleared all the shrubbery out of there, or most of it's done. Is that right, Scott, Tom? Majority. The majority of it's done. They'll be cleaning that up. It's just a one small step of trying to, again, we mentioned in our last meeting that we wanted to try to do things to make our place look a lot better. Welcome to Shepherdsville, right? What we'd like one day from maybe private donations, maybe not sure. How about Shepherdsville on both sides of the overpass so you know what town you're in? We want to make sure that you know you're here. And then when you get to see all the beautiful things that we're working on, so again, I'm excited about what's going on. We've got a couple more things to go through, but I, I cannot express my thanks for you to be here. Because for you to be here means it's important to you too. And I, I truly want to say thank you. All right, that said, uh, <laughs> Without further ado, we're just going to go through our list here. Planning and zoning update. I don't think I see anybody back. No, I don't see him back there. Board of Adjustments. I don't see anybody back there. Department heads. And they're always on a spot here. I told them they couldn't come to me and go, nope, nothing today, Mayor. Yeah, but I think for the most part, I'll let you off the hook, Scott. Uh, but anyway, Scott, do you have anything? After And we are. We're, we're targeting some things. We're looking at our funds to see where we can do, do some of this work. Some of it's a short-term fix. Some of it's going to be a long-term fix. But we know we have to look at our arteries in the city because we know traffic is always a challenge. Okay? No left-hand turn was just a good thing to do, but we still have a lot of opportunity how we're going to have our traffic patterns. So please bear with us. There. We are going to be working on that. But we just want to show you that we're sincere about what we're trying to get done. Um, Tom, you got any back here? Thank you for the striping. What's, what's that? I'm hiding back here. I can see you back here. Saw that. We're going to meet with them in two weeks and try to put together a plan for repairing those. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a major you know, disruption to everybody, yeah. but we really need to get those repaired. We do. We do. So and I did. We're going to try to do them far enough apart that hopefully we can have things across the other crossing. Yeah. So, what we did, just so you know, in the striping, I was very impressed, Tom, that they, gave, they came right out and made, knocked out that striping on that really quick. That's temporary. It will have a raised curve there. Okay, that's just so that people to start working on no left-hand turn. Right? But it will be raised, and 
I want to be careful when you drive through there at that time. Uh, so thank you for that, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, Lane Troutman, how are you doing, sir? Yes. I appreciate it, Chief. One thing I want to mention also, we have a sad situation at Levin Junction with that fire. Our crew was down there working, and I, I'm going to tell you, when we think about our police and our fire, I just want to tell you, I appreciate your, your crew and what they did, and I got a chance to talk to you. Uh, was it Saturday? I can't remember. Well, yeah, Saturday, Friday, my days get together. We talked a little bit about that, but I think it's important to know that, you know, in our community, we try to help each other out. So they went down there, and unfortunately, it wasn't the turnout that we would like, but... Uh, but pray for that family because that was really a very sad situation. But thank you, Chief. We appreciate what you guys do. All right, I was going to save the. I'm not. You got anything, Brenda? I always like to make sure huh? she doesn't have any. But I'm saving the best for last. Steve, Steve, I'm always saving you that. This is the police chief, Steve. If you haven't met him again, we're going to. He's still the new guy. I'll be, I'll be here after the meeting. Come on, talk to me if you want. Some of the things. Uh, Police Chief, I appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. I, I do want to say uh, two important things with you guys back here. When we start practicing for softball to beat Matt Washington, and when does basketball start? We are beating those guys this year, right? All right, let's get practice starting because we're going to beat them. They're not winning this year. I did, I did forget to mention one thing. This area that's uh, where Wendy's is in the 44 is a state area. We had to call the state to get approval to do what we did. Okay, It's their job to do it, but they wouldn't do it, so we had to call them. said, can we clean it up like they were going to say no, but it's a reflection on us. And unfortunately, some of these situations, like the CSX, is not something that's in our control. But we do what we can. I know, you know, Tom, we finally got some light at the end of the tunnel on that one. That's been like that for years. We've struggled with them in that partnership as far as that, that railroad crossing. But, you know, we try to make sure that you guys know that some areas are not in our jurisdiction, but we will go to the people that are involved there, and hopefully we get some partnership at least letting us do it so it makes our city look better. But I want to make sure I include that there. So thank you, Arthur, for making those phone calls. Appreciate that. All right, I got everybody covered on it. Now, I'm not going to make the mistake of not letting the council talk. Last you meeting. Did you need to address the surplus? Oh, uh, no, we were actually going to skip that, Mike. I apologize. Okay. We, that, we probably didn't. We just nixed that till next week because right. we had this beautiful park we we're going to talk about. We're not talking about some ugly truck we want to put in surplus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Mike. It's all right. All right. So I'll, I'll start. I started with you last time. I think I'll start with. Uh, no, they go. Which way, sir? Paul, Paula, come on, Paula. What'd you get? Oh. Insights. Um, I'm just excited for all the progress that's going on in the city. And um, today, I just I heard from a, um, a, a citizen today just concerned about the traffic on Cedar Grove in front of the elementary. So. Yeah, some of that's going to be resolved with the, uh, with the construction of the, yes. the five lane. There. So hopefully, some of that that traffic will get out there. Mm -hmm. but appreciate it. Now, and one thing, Paula and Mike, and obviously mm -hmm. that I mentioned with about Vicky, she said I saw her in the background. Hi, Vicky. All right. <laughs> 
but it's important that they're going to get together and put some things together on the on the, the streetscape because that's important part of what we're doing because that's the accessories to making that because the, the part that we're going to do is we're, we're we're doing we're reconstructing those sidewalks and that curbing will all be done from the river and it, when I think Rob was talking about the flooding that's also also going to be fixed in there it's going to be filled in 18 inches so the water won't flood right there that before the bridge so that is part of the whole fixing of getting into the town square and moving all that that road has to be fixed for flooding so I know he didn't he mentioned that we were going to fix it but that is part of it. we are going to resolve that flooding there um, all right Mr. Mike Hibbert well, you know, I usually have something to say, but it's hard to follow that act. Uh, I will say this. Tonight, you guys seen pretty much rubber stamp voting on these issues. And that's because any, and I can only speak for me, any concern I had about any of these, I went to the mayor ahead of time, we discussed it, and now we know what's going on and we don't have to have these arguments in public, which was unproductive, okay? And for that, I thank you. You're welcome. And I hope it continues. It will, sir. <laughs> it will, sir. So, That's how uh, good operation works. You know? So did y'all have an argument behind closed doors? Yes, we did. Absolutely. <laughs> I got two baseball bats in my office. You pick one, I get the I'm other. We, we We had it in, in private and now we know. Good. Good. Ms. Faith? Well, you wanted me to bring this Absolutely. up. Absolutely. So the mayor put me on a committee, myself and Jennifer, um, and it's events until the new person's hired, and we will still help her with every event. But I started working on this last year, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, it's called the Food Truck Invasion. Hillview had one, and it was a blowout. Uh, he's come in. He met with uh, uh, the mayor and I, and great guy, owns several restaurants, food trucks. So we're going to have 15 food trucks, several vendors, and we're going to have this awesome band that I've got tonight. We're going to have beer. <laughs> well, that's one of the food trucks. Beer's one of the food trucks. Beer's food. Yeah, beer's food. Right. But the, the, I'm really excited about this band. They're called The Swerve. Look them up. Uh, they do all different types of music. Uh, we're gonna ha oh they're bringing a bounce house forgot to tell you about oh, that they're bringing a bounce house vendors it's gonna be a lot of family fun I hope everybody comes out it's May the twenty first from twelve to five and I know that's a ways off but you know we gotta get this planned and I got some more exciting come news on, come on so the Shepherdsville Farmers Market will start on June the third like always the first Saturday in uh, June and the last Saturday in September. Uh, time when the new person's hired, she'll do the time and everything, but it'll probably be about the same. Um, and I've already got tons of people wanting to be vendors. And the best news is the city fair slash the bullet blast will be June the 30th and July the 1st. That's a Friday and a Saturday. The mayor and I have already um, got like four bands booked. And it's good bands. One of them is called the Captured. It's a Journey tribute band. They were in Mount Washington. They had 1,500 people there. That was super good. And the other one is a local guy, and a lot of people have been talking about this group on Facebook. It's called, they're called the Penny Royals. A lot, some of you may went to school with them. Uh, boy grew up in my subdivision, Austin Burns. Do you, do you know him, Joe? He sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, he's going to be there on Friday night with another group, and then... Uh, capture be there Saturday night and mm. I, he's bringing a band with him too and I'm trying to get him to bring his son because his son is probably as good as him you know but anyways um so that's our news <clears throat> so we're still working on bullet blast yep. and oh we have we do have a carnival booked and no cost to the city at all so that's good and um it's the same carnival that does Hillview and the Bullock County Fair. So that's booked. Bands are booked. We're we ready. We just need people to come. <laughs> so thank you. I want to make sure the one of the things as we're developing with this park plan, we want to have community activities here. We want people to do things here. And uh, this, this food truck invasion is going to be, I think, awesome. I think it's just the idea of having things here. We're going to showcase local. There'll be some local vendors in that. We want to make sure we're always promoting our local. Uh, and then also, you know, we're getting started on the uh, City Fair Bullet Blast. 
And I think once we get that going, we'd like to have maybe one more in the fall so we have three different events that we can have with that along with our farmers markets because we want to make sure that we're doing things for folks here. I don't want you to drive anymore than you have to. I really want you to be here and enjoy the type of things that we can do together. So this is building back our community. We're all living here, some work here, and we go everywhere else to do so. <coughs> okay. We want to make that change, we change your habits and have you stay here. So we're trying to give you some activities, some things, support local bands, support local food, and they'll have beer. All right. Thank you, Ms. Faith. You're welcome. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for the work on Old Beach Grove Road because that's my area of town. So I want to thank you all for that. <coughs> it was awful driving like this down the road. Um, I also want to thank um, Faith Portman because she is a whirlwind of information. So when she's playing, like going through all this stuff and she's like this, 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 and I'm lost. So she is awesome at all these events. You all are going to have so much fun at these because she is amazing. Well, you are too. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and, yeah, that's it. Well, Jim, thank you. Mr. Brett? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier the KLC conference. Uh, that was very informative. Uh, good time getting to bond with everybody. Um, so I was appreciative of the opportunity. Um, and then on the park project, um, <coughs> I know $30 million is a huge number, and it scares a lot of people. But I, I really encourage everybody to just kind of forget about the money for a second, really look at the project, see what all is entailed in it. And, um, you know, it's not just a park. It's, I think it's a, you know, a foundational transformative project that's really it's going to make our community more of a destination. You know, I, one of the things I said to, to the mayor you know, when we first came into office was, I'm tired of Shepherdsville being a pit stop. I, I want to make us a destination. And um, I think this is one of those projects that could do that for us. Um, this is really going to be something, that's, and it's a dynamic thing that we can build on uh, as the years go on. And uh, it addresses all the issues that we campaigned on, walkability, connectedness, um, and, and really providing uh, entertainment and, and attraction, uh, you know, avenues that we haven't had before. So, uh, really, you know, I encourage everybody to really look at the project, see what's entailed before you really, you know, make up your mind whether $30 million is worth it or not. So, that's all I want to say. And then we will have information. We are going to a new website that's going to be more navigational for you all to go to different departments. I mean, it's really going to be, it's, a, it's in the process. You know, Darren is working on that for us. With some folks but with that said you know right now we'll try to put some piecemeal on our website that we have now so that you at least see some of the things we'll, we'll put the plan on there if we get that taken care of arthur scott let's get that put on there so at least people can see i mean it's obviously tough to see in this but if you can see it you can at least see the layout the things we're trying to do so uh i can tell you right now that obviously this is a great time to be in shepherd i can say that sincerely because i believe there's a lot of support i see all the people that i see out there i see that guy right there and i see that guy right in the second row so I see people here that know, obviously, we want to do good things. And there's, we have leaders in here. I know I've seen some, I see leaders. I see Paraquet Springs. And I, and I see folks that want to be, Lee, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a bit, but good to see you. We appreciate you all being here because this is a, it's just a start. And uh, I won't forget you, Kay. But anyway, I just want to make sure you all know we're, we're appreciative of you being here. We're just getting started. And Amber is the lady in the third row. She's actually going to be Faith Portman's replacement on our, our, our farmer's market and, and uh, events. So you got a lot of work in front of you, but I hope you learn a lot this year because you're on your own next year. All right. I'll be but there. She'll be there. <laughs> well, listen, we appreciate it. We wanted to make this one a little bit shorter than we had the other ones, but we will get back to resuming some basic things that we need to take care of dressing. We want to introduce this. We'll keep you posted. And with that said, oh, which part do you get to get the second, second. row? I guess. All right, I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. Oh, Mike, here we got second. Nobody's going to take it away, Mike. Thank, Thank you. you all for being here. <laughs> oh, let's get a vote. we got to get a vote. got to get a vote. I keep forgetting. All right. Everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yes. For the yes. Oh, it doesn't even have names on it. That's okay. Thank you for everything, you two ladies. Thank you, thank you. We wore the two after that. Hey, just so you know, be nice to these two and don't talk to them for a while because they're mad. We put them a lot more. We, we worked hard to death to work these two ladies. Bird is not feeling well. It is an expensive thing to do. Who made the motion?